Question number four B. Outline seven ways in which the rich oppressed the poor in Israel during the time of Prophet Amos. Seven months. The poor were sold for a piece of silver, but the rich, the rich grabbed land of food belonging to the poor. Number four, the merchants used faulty scales. Number five, the rich sold goods that were unfit for human consumption to the poor. Number six, poor people were paid unfairly wage, or that they were underpaid. Number seven, the poor were sold into slavery for being unable to pay their debts. Number eight, they were charged high interest rates for their banked money. Number nine, the poor were denied justice in low cost due to bribing of charges by the rich. Number ten, the people were prosecuted when they challenged the injustices done. Number eleven, the rich failed to return the garments taken as pledge. Number twelve, wives of the rich pressured the husbands to exploit the poor to meet their luxurious lifestyles. Question number four C. Key five ways through which Christians in Kenya can avoid God's punishment today. Five marks. Ways through which Christians in Kenya can avoid God's punishment today. Christians can avoid God's punishment by obeying His commandments or obeying His commands, by reading and putting into practice the Word of God, by leading exemplary lives, that's what we call being a role model, by taking care of the less fortunate, and we call it carrying out charitable activities by forgiveness, by taking care of God's creation, by praying, by seeking spiritual guidance, by preaching the word of God. Question 5a. Outline the content of Prophet Jeremiah's letter to exile in Babylon. Six marks. So, the content of Jeremiah's letter to the exiles in Babylon. Prophet Jeremiah encouraged the exiles to build houses, or rather encouraged the exiles to settle down. He told them to plant gardens. He told them to marry so as to increase in number. So they married have children. Number four, Prophet Jeremiah advised them to live in peace in Babylon. He also warned them not to listen to the false prophets who led to them. Number six, he told them that God would restore them to the land after 70 years. Number seven, he encouraged them to trust in God. Because God was going to answer their prayers. But eight, he told them that God had good plans for them. Question 5 he gave seven reasons why Prophet Jeremiah condemned the practice of human sacrifice in Judah. Seven marks. So, reasons why Prophet Jeremiah condemned the practice of human sacrifices in Judah. Number one, the shedding of blood defiled the land given to the Israelites by God. Number two, human sacrifice was an act of idolatry. Number three, he demonstrated Israelites' disrespect to the sacredness of human life. Number four, human sacrifice showed lack of knowledge of the true nature of the earth. Number five, it was an act of disobedience, or rather it was against God's commandments. Number six, human sacrifice provoked God's anger. Number seven, it was an act of oppressing the weak of the innocent. It would lead to severe punishment. Number nine, it showed lack of faith in God. Question 5C. Identify seven ways in which Christians can help to reduce human suffering in Kenya today. Seven months. Ways in which Christians can help to reduce human suffering in Kenya today. Number one, Christians can help to reduce human suffering in Kenya today by establishing medical facilities or you provide medical care. Number two, by educating the public on their rights. Number three, by voting out corrupt leaders. Number four, creating job opportunities for people. Number five, by condemning social injustices. Number six, by providing basic needs to the needy. Number seven, by advocating for the just laws or the distribution of a fair distribution of resources. Number eight, respecting the laws or you report it to the relevant authorities, praying for those who are su suffering. Number 10, offering guidance and counseling to those who are suffering. And number 11 is by preaching peace and love for those who are another. Question 6 says, identify six regulations that an expectant mother is required to observe in traditional African community in six months. 
and expected mother is supposed to eat special food. Number two, she is not expected to perform heavy duties. Number three, she is to avoid sexual intercourse. Number four, an expectant mother is not supposed to handle sharp objects to avoid injury. Number five, she is not supposed to speak face to face with her husband. She is expected to wear protective charms against evil. Number seven, an expectant woman is required to return to her mother or her home for delivery. Number eight, she is supposed to be checked frequently by the midwives. Number nine, an expectant mother is to be given special hugs to keep the health of the baby. Number ten, she is supposed to make sacrifices to appease God. And number eleven, to avoid coming into contact with certain people or going to certain places. Question 6b, explain the rituals performed during the birth of a baby in traditional African communities. So rituals performed during the birth of a baby in traditional African communities. So here you're supposed to mention the ritual and what it meant. One, there is the cutting of the umbilical cord, which symbolizes the separation of the child from the mother. But two, there was the burying of the placenta in a special place for continuity of life. Number three, there was the shaving of the mothers and the baby's hair to signify new beginning. Number four, treatment of the baby and the mother with herbs, or they also wear charms for protection. Number five, relations are made according to the sex of the baby in order to announce the sex of the child. Number six, the mother and the baby are secluded for a period of time to give the mother time to heal. Number seven, there is celebrations to welcome the new member of the community. Number eight, there is presentation of gifts to the mother to celebrate them. Or there is the holding of the baby to signify shared responsibilities. Number nine, sacrifices are, of, are made to God as a sign of thanksgiving. Or prayers, or prayers to bless the baby and the mother. Also, rituals of purification are carried out to clean the mother from the process of the childbirth, and the baby is given a name for identity. Also, the baby is given sweet and bitter substances symbolizing good and bad experiences in her life. And the last question is question 6. It's seven factors that undermine the role of medicine in many in Kenya today. Seven marks. Factors that undermine the role of medicine in many in Kenya today. Introduction of Western medicine or sensor technology. Number two, emergence of new religions which do not support medicine men. Number three, the destruction of forests or deforestation. Number four, lack of proper education by herbalists. They lack professionalism. Number five, herbal medicine is cumbersome to look for. That is number five. Number six, low hygiene standards associated with herbal medicine. Number seven, certain chronic, chronic diseases cannot be treated by some herbs. Number eight, emergence of corn men or quacks who give from medicine. Number eight, there is urbanization, which is the migration from rural to urban centers. Number ten, lack of awareness or education on herbal medicine by the public. Number 11, strict government policies or strict government regulations that control both herbal and modern medicine. So that is the end of the third paper one. Thanks a lot for subscribing and listening to me. God bless you.